Hey guys, this is one of my beloved tropical hibiscus. Just so happens this is Midnight Trist. It has these gorgeous purple flowers. And this is just one of three tropical hibiscus that I happen to have. And in this video, it is time to repot these three tropical hibiscus. Uh, I'm going to be sharing how to do that, the ideal best suited soil mix for them, as well as all of the crucial care tips that you need to know, plus a whole bunch more. Stay tuned. All right, guys, these are my beautiful tropical hibiscus. Like I said, I have three right here in front of me. Now, there are literally thousands of tropical hibiscus out there um, with different colorations on the flowers, and I'm going to throw up some photos and videos of the different varieties I have here with me right now. That purple flower is one of my all-time favorite flowers and blooms ever, 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 ever. That one, uh, that variety happens to be called Midnight Trist. Uh, and I believe the one of the other um, varieties of hibiscus, tropical hibiscus that I have here is called Crown Jellyfish. And I cannot remember for the life of me the name of the third variety. So I'll be sure to include all of that information in the description down below. Now, I knew I was going to be repotting these uh, tropical hibiscus today, so I haven't watered them um, you know, as much as I probably would in the last day or two, and that's why uh, they're looking a little bit sadder than they probably should, but as soon as I have these guys transplanted, I'll be sure to give them a really thorough, healthy watering, and then they'll kind of bounce back a little bit, and those leaves will be a little bit perkier and fuller, all right guys, so when it comes to tropical hibiscus, there are hundreds if not thousands of varieties and what that means is there are you know a ton of different um, flower colorations and like I said, the purple one has to be one of my favorites um, and I'm going to throw the uh, variety types in the description down below so you can um, check out the ones that I have. Now, the last video I did on my tropical hibiscus was preparing them for winter or winterization, that entire thing. So if you're interested in checking out that video, you'll have to click on the link right here. Now, since then, these guys have been inside uh, over the course of the winter. I keep them right uh, beside a huge south facing window because they need that bright, bright sunlight to survive the winter. And like I said, in this video, I'm going to start by repotting these guys into a new beautiful terracotta pot that I'm so excited to show you. And then I'm going to dive into all of the crucial care tips, uh, including um, light, watering and fertilization and a bunch more. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna pick one of these, start with it and show you guys the pot. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler and if you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. To really show me some love, click on the bell for alerts and notifications for future content and Oh yeah, don't forget to check out my brand new merch store, tylermossup.com. All right guys, so I'm going to be using these beautiful terracotta pots for each of the three tropical hibiscus. Now obviously there's a saucer and each of the terracotta pots has a beautiful large drainage hole which is really important um, so that that water can just drain right through despite hibiscus needing you know a really healthy amount of water just generally speaking which i'll get into a lot more detail when i'm talking about the crucial care tips but i just wanted to show you these beautiful pots uh, that I'm gonna be using to repot the tropical hibiscus. Now, whatever you decide to use for your soil mix, for your tropical hibiscus, there's one really critical sort of thing that you need to keep in mind, and that is that you use uh, organic-based soil components. Now, what that means is that all of the ingredients that you're using are basically plant material that are decomposed, like peat moss um, or bark, that kind of thing. You're gonna want to avoid sort of like mineral 
minerals and sort of rock content uh, for your hibiscus. I'm going to mix up uh, exactly what I'm using and break down all of the different ratios and components for you guys right now. All right guys, so I've gone ahead and mixed up uh, some soil mix here for uh, my tropical hibiscus and I've gone and used about two parts of peat moss to about one part of like a coarse bark. And I've added a couple of other ingredients in here as well that I'm gonna talk about Immediately after this, um, if I did have some coco coir, I would probably add that as well. However, I'm all out actually, so it's just the peat moss and the uh, coarse bark, but this should work just fine. Now, these are the other two products that I wanted to mention. Now, I'm not sponsored by these companies or by these products or anything, but I did include uh, these uh, products in that soil mix that I just showed you guys. Now, this one over here, this is called Systemic Houseplant Insect Control. Um, tropical hibiscus and his, hibiscus, just generally speaking, are notorious for pests like spider mites and ain't nobody got time for that. So uh, by including the correct amount and it's all kind of provided to you on the back on the instructions, how much to include by using this in the soil mix, um, you know, you're going to really save your time really save yourself a lot of time and hassle by avoiding uh, pests uh, by using this. Now this is a slow release pearl fertilizer and uh, this is really important for hibiscus obviously to get those gorgeous beautiful flowers. Now there is another fertilization uh, option for hibiscus and I'm going to talk about that when we talk about all of the crucial care. So these new terracotta pots are about nine inch, uh, nine inches in diameter uh, coming from these older containers which are about seven. One to two inches is about the correct increase in size. You wouldn't want to go much bigger than that. Now these hibiscus have been growing really, really quickly. Uh, and like I said, I just repotted these before bringing them indoors um, in the fall. So I'm just feeling a little bit more confident by going with nine inches because I just feel like there's going to fill up this space super quickly. But yeah, let me transplant this first one and then I'll show you uh, how that went. And then uh, we can move on to the others. Oh wow. All right guys, so these roots look amazing, but this thing popped right out. No struggle, um, you know, clearly it's time for a repot. Now you can probably see that I used some perlite when I had repotted these in the fall and I'm not sure if perlite's organic or not, but I would probably say it's not. So I'm going to not be adding any extra. Uh, as you saw, there's none in that new soil mix that I'm using. But uh, like I said, definitely time for a repot. And these roots do look really nice and healthy, so that's great too. Now, I think the one important tip to keep in mind when uh, you're repotting your hibiscus, that is, if it's if yours is as root-bound as mine, I think the one thing you would want to do is just kind of loosen the roots a little bit at the bottom uh, before we're putting it in a new pot so it just helps kind of get the roots growing in new directions to fill up the new space uh, in the new pot. All right guys, so that's one down, two more to go. Let me quickly uh, repot those other two so I can share all of the crucial care tips for your tropical hibiscus. All right guys, so that's the second one down. Now I took the opportunity while repotting to straighten this one out. This one was growing a little bit crooked uh, in the original pot and now it's kind of nicely upright. So really looking forward to that. One left to go, let's get it done. All right guys, super happy with how these have turned out and re repotted and I did kind of take advantage of this opportunity to straighten some of these out so that they're just growing a little bit more upright, especially this one was kind of like, you know, totally horizontal. But uh, I wanna share with you guys um, all of the crucial care tips. Now I do keep these indoors, outdoors, or indoor, outdoor. Um, obviously I keep them indoors in the winter time and then I do like to bring them out onto my back deck uh, in the summer, which is great because like I said, these these plants, tropical hibiscus, love a lot of sun. Uh, the more, the merrier. You do need to be aware and cautious of when you are transitioning them back outdoors um, from the winter time to the summer, that they're not just being plumped right into that full sun, that you give them some shade initially and then slowly transition them over a couple of weeks into that bright sun. Now these plants do love to be watered. Um, 
Now I've had issues where I've given them too much water and then some of the leaves will turn yellow um, and I just kind of like, you know, pick those off but I'm trying to avoid that. And what I think I'm learning when it comes to tropical hibiscus is as soon as the leaves start to look like they need to be watered a little bit, then I take that opportunity uh, to water them. And it's really a function of how much light they're getting to begin with. So here in the Northeast, you know, there could be a week where it's just purely snowing, blizzard, nor'easters, horrible, um, not a lot of sun. So you might wanna cut back on watering during weeks like that. And then, um, you know, there can be weeks, very few of them, but uh, where there's a lot more sun and uh, that's a good opportunity. You know, you might be watering them as much as every day or every other day. So just, it, I've found uh, for me that it can really fluctuate uh, in terms of water. So really the best thing and the best advice I can give is just kind of pay attention to um, what the leaves are telling you and if they look like they need to be watered, um, then water them. But I would kind of wait for that sign uh, in terms of watering. Now I mentioned that I used some um, slow release pearls uh, to fertilize these, but if you have any sort of um, like fish fertilizer or something, apparently tropical hibiscus love that. Uh, so I definitely need to find some of that so I can use that and see if I'm getting a lot more flowers or not. Um, if you do love hibiscus and you have some and you use that type of fertilizer, please comment down below. Let me know, have you noticed more blooms uh, and that kind of thing. And uh, what else? So light, water, um, you don't really need to worry about humidity when it comes to these plants and really that's kind of it these plants bring me absolutely so much joy especially that purple one I absolutely love it but uh, yeah what do you guys think are you a fan of tropical hibiscus what have your experiences been with them uh, like I said leave a comment down below all right guys that's it for me miss you guys already oh yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or better yet you can hit that subscribe button until the next one